Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Cash. Thank you so much for joining me here. I hope you're having a great day. Let's take another look here at AVAX. Wow, what a champion here. Uh, taking off, holding strong, looking good. We wanna double check a few things. We're gonna clean up the chart here, draw out some new fibs. And if you're curious like, hey, how do I draw out Fibonacci retracement levels when prices are running like this? Well, unless we're in price discovery, we can really just rely on previous highs and lows. So the best way to go would be from our previous high to our new low, and essentially you kind of look at the the chart this way here. And we can kind of see how obvious this 0.618 FIB level held very strong. It's really common for most altcoins right now to have pivoted off that level. We saw the same thing with SUI, Solana. Uh, most are kind of averaging themselves out there just before the next leg up. So um, I think we're gonna see a lot of altcoins kind of uh, respond very positive to those levels. Anyways, just some food for thought there. What we want to also look at too would be our point of control, kind of I think 2750, if I remember correctly, was that level. We can see the most amount of volume right here. So again, that's just just this this 0.5 fib level coincidentally, but also the local high. Okay, so again, price pulls back, 0.618 would be good. 2820 is a rough estimate, and or 2750 for the secondary target there. I like to kind of cover that off the bat just so you kind of know. Um, kind of where you're at there because I get the question about like DCA targets for coins that are running. That's kind of where you want to consider getting in if that even happens, right? We don't truly know if that will occur, but generally speaking, um, you know, most alts are doing well, at least today. So uh, there's a good chance we may not even see that happen. But if Bitcoin does correct itself to 62, 61K, then I think those are likely targets for you. Uh, let's look at the back end data, kind of see where we're at. Before we get started though, just want to ask, quickly hit like the button. You don't have to like the button, just hit the like button, and that would probably help a lot. Thanks so much again for always doing that. We have a lot of community members and or just um, you know consistent viewers. Some people have been watching me for like three and a half years since I started the channel, uh, so deeply appreciate that. And again, thanks all, so much always uh, for hitting the like button there and or commenting below. Love to hear your thoughts. And if you read the comments down below, you'll see we get a lot of scammers. Uh, unfortunately, I'll never direct message you or you know kind of. Uh, try to solicit you. It's not unfortunate, but it's unfortunate that happens and just know I will never do that myself. Um, but anyways, go ahead and join the join the, the, the ranks and <laughs> see what you, go ahead and laugh at the comments, I guess. Sometimes it's pretty funny. Anyways, take a look at here at AVAX, we can double check. We're just gonna look at the, the last 30 days versus the more recent past. Cause if you see over here, there's some late shorts, but nothing too crazy, upwards of $30. But we look here previously, this goes back all the way back to, um, what, the 7th of October, roughly five days ago, we can see a pretty heavy concentration of shorts at about 29.60, upwards of $30. So it would make sense for us to see a one last little sweep up to $30, destroy a bunch of accounts, and then just come on back down as if it never happened. It's standard trading 101, folks. You're gonna see that happen all the time. So just all the more reason to not be another statistic. Those are probably high leverage shorts. If you do a low leverage short, it might be a different story. You'd probably be able to survive the ebbs and flows of trading and potentially even get to your target, right? That's what we do. Low leverage, low position size, just to give you perspective here. Like we took profit on a Bitcoin short. That was a 10X short. That's the highest leverage I go. Uh, all altcoins, Aptos, for example, 39%, uh, ICP, 20%. We get profits in a lot of ways, a decent amount without going too crazy. And the reason why low leverage is nice because you don't get liquidated all the time. Actually, we never get liquidated because we have stop losses in place. And even if those trigger, they're, they're still well below liquidation events. Anyways, liquidation should never happen if you are being a responsible person. Uh, if you have a lot of liquidation events, you probably need to reevaluate and um, maybe look inside, see what the heck's going on because there's a problem somewhere in there. Okay, so let's take a look at the daily time frame. Work our way down as per usual. We're above all the important indicators here. Being above the 20, that's kind of hanging out at that 27.50, that low $27 mark significantly reaffirming that being a good consideration for entry. So I'm just gonna add an alert here to kind of reevaluate if we get to that 2750 mark, see if it's worth taking along. I don't think we're gonna see that based on how much volume we're seeing today, which is crazy today being on a weekend, we have more volume today than yesterday and the daily candlestick hasn't even closed yet. Um, that would be a solid entry. Again, I consistently set alerts like this that never trigger or they may eventually trigger when conditions are totally different. So please understand 2750 is kind of like a, uh, I wouldn't say a pipe dream, but it's it's certainly not a, a distinct reality right now, but that's the world that I like to live in because uh, I prefer an entry in an area that I prefer to get into versus forcing a trade right now at the top. Not saying it's a force, it's just, you know, there's not much meat left on the bone here and it would make sense for the price to eventually pull back. A lot of that hinges on Bitcoin pulling back too though, and it's showing some strength 
oddly enough, on a weekend, which it's been doing a lot lately. Anyways, take a look here. We can see we're over 50 on the R side. That's generally construed as a very, very bullish sign. Stochastic R side swinging up. Money flow index bounced off 30, which isn't super relevant, but it is important to recognize that money flow index is increasing. That's important in the sense that we need to know there's more money flowing in than out. You got to recognize too, though, it's not going to be shooting up right now because a lot of the selling pressure is still a, a, Included. It's a 14 day lag, so it's going to take 14 candles and tell you how much money is flowing in or out. And there's a lot of outflow here, so it's not going to show you too much. The key here is we're over zero line on the trend strength index, and we can also see MACD is converging too. So uh, this coin has every reason to probably run towards $30 and possibly even break that level. Okay. And again, $30 is just kind of that rough estimate of where all the liquidation is at. Uh, we can see here as well with TD sequential, we are overextended now. Generally speaking, you usually see somewhat of a pullback in those in those situations. So again, in a perfect world, the price pulls back to this 0.618 Fib level here. We bounce off 28.20, and the price continues higher from there. That's generally what we'd be what I'd be looking for for entry. Uh, minus kind of again an egregious entry at 27.50. But I do think 28.20. So I'll set an alert there as well. I think that's a solid consideration for a long, just being a key Fib level as well as just. You know, with us being overextended leading into that, it doesn't make a ton of sense for the price to continue to run upwards. Only reason this would continue higher is if Bitcoin takes a go at it. Not to say that AVAX is reliant on Bitcoin, but altcoins in general have to have Bitcoin doing moderately well in order for them to continue higher up. Okay, so just please understand that. Uh, anyways, RSI, we're at uh, this very awesome point in which we can see we're over 70. You do not short into that, nor do you secure profits on your long. I know it seems crazy. Why wait for the price to pull back in order to secure profits? But you get more um, more consistency in that way. So if you ever look at the RSI on, on the four hour time frame, when it goes above 70, anytime you sell, when it comes back down below 70, you're going to find tremendously more profit than you will when it crosses above. So right now you're in that sweet spot. Don't sell if you have a long position open. Consider selling when the RSI crosses back down below 70. And the reason why that's relevant is because that just kind of lets us know the uh, the uptrend, the significant um, overextension is discontinuing, okay? Me personally, when I see this TD sequential here, we've been running for about 36 hours straight. I feel like I would want to secure profits soon. That's just me personally. I would be adjusting my stop loss higher. That's basically what I'd be doing. Either way you look at it, it's truly a bullish sign. It's a very good sign. We can see this local high here potentially going to work as a new low. There is a fair value gap here, uh, down as low as about 280 Sorry, 2875. So we could even see the price come back down, hang out here, and then take off. Okay. Again, in a perfect world, the price comes down here, get in, and then the price takes off from there. Either way you look at it, there's a lot of reasons why the price is more likely to go up than down. Again, if we take a look at liquidation, there's some incentive there upwards of even 3250. There's a decent amount of liquidation. In fact, I forgot to look at the delta here. We have a pretty significant amount of longs in this coin. So you got to keep in mind when the delta gets super high, like it is right now, uh, capitulation pullbacks are very standard. So please recognize that there are some signs in the back end you can't really see on the charts that are telling us that the price may pull back. Uh, we have our open interest here. Most people are interested in, in this position here at about $26.50 or $26 even. Okay, so again, just some, some extra facts there for you, but. I mean, at this point, if Bitcoin can maintain 63K, I think uh, AVAX will probably breach the 30 plus dollar range. Uh, if Bitcoin pulls back a little bit, I would say these two levels here, 2820 and or 2750 as some easy round numbers would be good considerations for dollar cost averaging or um, potentially a very, very low leverage long position. All right. Remember, emphasis on low leverage, okay? Please understand that. Uh, at this point, though, that's all we got. The last thing, oh, no, there's, this is also very important. Make sure you reference this, too. This is only available for the rest of the month. Uh, BitUnix, Phenomenal Exchange, link down below. If you've used my link to register, this is primarily a benefit for my community members. Uh, you're automatically eligible for this, so take advantage. If you've never used my link to register or never used them, consider trying. They're a phenomenal, no KYC VPN required exchange. Check them out. I have an instructional video on how to use their exchange as well if you're curious. I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks again for your time. We'll see you next one. Take care.